glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Jacob's Don't treat me like they used to since I laid my burdens down. Friends, don't treat me like they used to since I laid my burdens down. I feel better. So much better to be in the house of the Lord today. Isn't it awesome to see all these men up here singing? Amen. 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 Singing glory, glory, and at the end of it, laying our burdens down. Amen. amen. Coming into a rest that only the Lord can give us. What a magnificent morning to be here on behalf of Pastor Jackson and Miss Linda Jackson who are not with us this morning. You guys, I pray that you feel welcomed here. Um, and so I don't see any visitors, but if I miss any visitors, I think we're all family here. Yes. And if we do have any visitors online, you are family too. So we just want to thank and welcome everybody into this place. Um, 
We really only have two announcements, you guys. Is that okay? We just got two. Um, and then we're going to pray a little bit differently today. But um, <clears throat> our first announcement is uh, directly after service today. I hope that all the women can meet us downstairs for our community service project. Um, it's going to be great. We're going to work together. We're going to have a great conversation. But most importantly, we are going to put our hands and feet to work to serve other women. Amen. 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 All right. All right. And then our second announcement is Bible study, which we know is every week. Um, so we'll be having that on Wednesdays at noon online and then 6 p.m. here for Bible study. And I think we're in 1 Samuel, which is pretty awesome, right? Uh, we get to learn about the beginnings of the King David. So with that being said, you guys, we're going to get to prayer. But can we do something a little different today? Could the men come down to the altar, please? And could you bring two of those mics? And if there's any men in the pews that would like to come to the altar, this is your time. We are going to have a time of prayer. But we've been having some community gatherings the past few months that have been praying and covering our men. And it's been pretty powerful. At 6 a.m. on Tuesdays, we get up as some, some women in the community come together and we pray on Zoom. But there's been other gatherings in Collinsville and other places. And so we have the privilege of having men leading and serving in this church. Can we please give the Lord some praise for that? Because it's important. And we are so glad that each and every one of you choose to serve the Lord, choose to be here, choose to magnify him with your gifts, with your presence, with how you've raised your families. We are honored. We are honored. And so this morning, I'm going to read the prayer list, but I thought it would be great if we passed the mic down and the men led us in prayer this morning. So these are the lists of people that we will be praying for specifically. And then we're gonna hand it over to our men to pray and cover us. So on our prayer list, we have Jennifer Hamilton, Lawrence Simmons, Carolyn Pewitt Macon, Orlando Dickey, S.C. Dickey, Catherine Mitchell, Cynthia Haynes, Nicola Thomas, and Rose Thompson. If there's any other announcements, you guys, that'll be in the email. But this morning, amazing men, as we pray for the offering and as we pray covering over this body, and our pastor and first lady who are not here, we just pray that you give up specific prayers the Lord is putting on your heart. And that if at least two could, could pray for us, then we can be blessed this morning. Amen, everybody? Amen. So we're going to ask that everybody else get in whatever position you like to be in. You can always come to the altar, male or female, children, young adults at any time. These men right here are just going to lead us. So feel free to come to the altar. Feel free to get in whatever position you like to be in to pray. So we'll start with Deacon Howard. Thank you. Good morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come this morning, Lord, on bending knees, Lord. We just come, Lord, with, uh, with open heart, Lord. We come, Lord, just to say thank you for this day, Lord, an opportunity to bless your holy name, Lord. Lord, for we know that we cannot do uh, all things by ourselves, but we need you, Lord. Lord, and we just thank you for carrying us each and every day, Lord. We pray that uh, our faith will increase, Lord. We pray that... Uh, our love and our mercy for our fellow brother uh, and our fellow mankind, Lord, will grow each and every day, Lord. And Lord, and for all the names that were called this morning, Lord, who are in need of prayer, in need of a special blessing, Lord, in need of healing, Lord, in need, Lord, of all the things that sometimes we just overlook and don't say thank you for in a given day, Lord. We just pray for each and every soul. We pray for restoration. Uh, we pray for healing, Lord. And we pray that all lives, all the names that were called, they will be restored, Lord, and they can come back in fellowship with you in this house once again, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for all you've done. We pray that uh, our pastor and his wife will be blessed in their absence. Yes. And we pray, Lord, for our families. Uh, we just pray for one another. We pray that war and peace will somewhat have a, a happy ending, Lord. Uh, that there be no more wars, Lord, for we know that there's turmoil everywhere we go, Lord, but we just thank you that you are an awesome God, and you have all of those things covered in your hands, Lord, and Lord, once again, thank you for this day. We just pray for Mount Joy, and pray that we will just continue to be a blessing to you on one accord. Good morning, Mount Joy. Good morning. I want to Prayer for the health of our members, our community, 
in this church yesterday um, at the uh, breakfast. We heard about some, 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 some of the members that had some illnesses that I didn't even know about. But it was a blessing that they were fortunate to be well and they were able to share their journey with the members of the faith. And hopefully we can take that forward and we can pass it on throughout our journey so that we can kind of watch over each other and we can basically concentrate and focus on Father God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together and have a place of worship. We ask you to continue to bless us and guide us and lead us to the throne. Father, we thank you for all the blessings you put in our lives, our families, our children, our grandchildren, and Father, some of us have great-grandchildren that's here today. And we just want to thank you, Lord, for the love you have shown us and give us a heart and a mind to be a blessing to someone else as we move through this community. And Father, we say a, a prayer especially for uh, Larry Lawrence Simmons, who's resting at home. We pray for him, Lord, and his family. And ooh, I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father God, Amen. my prayer this morning is a thanks to you. I have come to you so many times to ask for your blessing. And you, in your wisdom, did your will. And I want to thank you for bringing me to the point in life where I know it's not my will to be done. But God, it's your will to be done. And I want to thank you for all of the blessings you bestowed on me, my family, this church, and this world. Thank you, God. My Father, we come this morning just to come before you with our prayers, our concerns, our wishes, our desires. We don't really know how to pray with our earthly constraints of our thoughts. And so we ask that the Holy Ghost just add his utterances to yes. our petitions and he'll be acceptable to you. We pray for those that are just with us, sick, the depths of their needs, Lord, we ask that you'll pray for <clears throat> the desire of our hearts to keep us on the faith of the gospel. Constrained by their earthly capacity, we ask that you dig deeper into their prayers and their desires. Fulfill the blessing. And we ask while we are assembled here in worship, that you, Lord, the presence of your spirit, walk among Dear Lord, thank you for your kindness, for your grace. Ask you just to keep your blessed hand on our community, our families, and our loved ones. Guide us, Lord, as we walk your path. We may keep a straight head, keep a strong mind. Powerful heart and a blessed soul, Lord. You are an awesome God, and I know there's a lot of people who need help that maybe don't know how to explain it, don't know how to speak it. Everyone, <laughs> everyone, you know, is uh, finding their way, Lord. Just if their light is dim or if it's bright. Just keep shining and just keep growing. I thank you for just being there through the tough times and the down times and the good times and the hot times. <laughs> and just 
find more people that's going to learn you well is a journey that is there. And I thank you for the team. Um, I hope that we're able to build as a community, a community as a family, and just grow stronger in your word, Lord. In Jesus' name. And the church says amen. amen. Thank you all.
shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear. Start over. <laughs> the earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun You know, it's okay to have fun, right? Amen. All right, we should be able to laugh and enjoy ourselves in fellowship, right? Amen. That was that was wonderful. <laughs> that was wonderful. And I love when we're operating in our gifting because you just see it come through, right? It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So thank you, amazing voices and willing souls. Thank you, Ms. Lisa, for leading us. Appreciate it. Um, are we ready to get into the Word? Amen. All right, so we're going to get into the Word today, you all. We're going to talk about some things. Um, straight from the Bible, and we're going to be encouraged by the Israelites that came before us so that we actually don't do what they did. Amen? Amen. All right? So we can walk in a new way. But I love that we sang burdens down this morning because we're going to be talking about the Lord's rest. Everybody say the Lord's rest. The Lord's, the Lord's rest. rest. Right? And where the Lord's rest is, there are, all of our burdens are not just down, but they are dissolved. Amen? We no longer have the ailments, the sicknesses, the, the diseases, right? The situationships, the things that break us and that burden us, the pain. We don't have that in the Lord's rest. But there's a recipe to enter his rest, amen? Amen? And if you don't know, today we're going to talk about it. And I hope you do know. So we're going to um, read the word, we're going to pray, we're going to get into it. Sound good? Amen. So if everybody could stand for the reading of the word, we're going to be coming out of Hebrews chapter 4 today, verses 9 through 16. We will be floating between chapters 3 and 4. Um, so I just ask that you, whatever you don't catch today, you read for yourself later. Amen? Amen? All right. All right. And Siri is with us. All right. Let's read. There remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us, therefore, be diligent to enter that rest lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Thank you for reading the word. Holy Spirit, you are already here, already moving, already, Lord, present. Oh, and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you left your spirit here for us to have a discerner, 
to have one that can intercede on our behalf, to be our compass. So Holy Spirit, move in this place. Lord, I pray for accessible hearts, God. I pray that your word become clear. If we read something just now, God, that didn't make sense, God, I pray that you bring clarity, knowledge, wisdom, and discernment to the ears and hearts and eyes of the people here today, God. Most importantly, I die to myself, Lord, that I simply be a messenger and a vessel, God, that I hold your word dear to my heart, God, and what comes out of me is through you, Lord, so we thank you. We praise you and we lift you up already for the admonishing we're going to receive for your word today, God. I pray we be encouraged and that this fellowship leave here with joy, God, that we not just be named Mount Joy, but we operate in joy, God, and that this word be a joy to our hearts either through conviction, through challenging God, or through encouragement. In Jesus' name, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray to our Heavenly Father that is seated on the throne right now, governing us accordingly, God, through mercy and grace. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. My first question this morning is, what is rest? I would say eight hours of sleep, sleep before a good meal, right? A lot of REM sleep, you know? No pressure on the, the <laughs> struggles of tomorrow, so I can just be at peace. When I think of rest, that's what that means to me. Some people might think Netflix and chill. Some people might think a hike in the mountains. Some people might find rest actually in relationship with other people. Some people find rest in solitude. When we think of the form of rest that we find in the Webster Dictionary, we see that. But is that the rest Hebrews 4 is referring to? Some people may even think of the Sabbath. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Right? So we go back to Genesis. The Lord created the heavens and the earth and everything that we see in six days. In the seventh day, what did he do? He rests. Well, technically, we are talking about a bit of the Sabbath. Because, see, the Sabbath rest shows where God completed everything. Everything was completed in six days. Can y'all believe that? And on the seventh day, he rested. So everything that we are experiencing now, the Lord had already completed it. And he's showing us that in the end, after everything is complete, what will happen? Rest. So then what rest am I referring to? Everybody say eternity. eternity. The rest we're referring to in Hebrews 4 is we're talking about the eternal rest that we will have as believers if. And we're going to get to the if. But first, I have to give you some context. We just read it today, Hebrews chapter 4, 8, it says, If Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterwards have spoken of another day. Everybody say another day. Another day. So what we're referring to here in Hebrews, basically chapters 1 through 4, is refer we're, we're going back to Moses, right? We had the Israelites that were enslaved for, does anyone know how long? They were enslaved. So before Moses came, how long were the Israelites enslaved? Do we know? Hundreds of years, right? Right? 400 to be exact. Thank you, Miss Howard. Yes. And then the Lord sends Moses. He spent 40 years under the Egyptian rule, and then he spent 40 years basically outcast because of his decision, yes? And then at the age of 80, the Lord sends Moses to, to set his who free? His people free. Y'all going to have to talk with me this morning, all right? This is not a morning to sit and look. This is a morning to talk. So when I talk, I need y'all to talk back. Amen. So he sent Moses to set his people free. And at that time, his people were simply referred to as the Israelites or the Jews. Are you guys with me? It's important for us to understand this or we don't understand the great, great grace and mercy we have today. As is anyone in this room a Jew or an Israelite? I know that's how some of us are going, oh, I wish I were. Well, be who you are <laughs> because we have become God's people. But it's in the downfall of the Jews that it opened up to the Gentiles. But let me teach it. Are you guys ready to be taught a little bit this morning? So our example is Moses, right? He frees the people. The Lord splits the sea. They walk through it. The sea covers back up. We know the story, right? We've seen it in movies. But then there was 40 years in the wilderness where not only did God show his mighty hand, because how many of us would love for manna to just appear outside of our door every day? Okay, thank you, Dr. Carter. Hey, let's go. Every day, walk outside, pull up manna. Sweet luscious bread, <laughs> all right? How many of us would love to just, oh, God, I need something, and he's going to send fowls every day for you to get and take and be able to eat? I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? He's made water come out of the rocks. Like, the Lord shows so many miracles in those 40 years. But why are we talking about these 40 years? Because if I go back to verse 8 in chapter 4, it says, for if Joshua had given them rest, 
Why is Joshua important? Who, who came after Moses? Joshua, right? Did Moses make it into the promised land? No. He didn't, right? He had some, he did not fully obey the Lord in everything. So he got to see it, but he couldn't sense it. He couldn't feel it. He couldn't be in it. He couldn't enter in the promised land. And, and if that preached alone, how many of us have read and seen the glory of God, but wonder if we will actually experience it? That preaches itself. And it's crazy because Moses is lifted up to be this high man of faith. He's already brought up in Hebrews 1, and that he is, but he still didn't enter. Why? We're going to get there. 40 years, the Israelites wandered. And that generation did not enter the promised land. Why? We're going to get to it. But yet Joshua, you know, Moses sent 12 spies into the promised land, right? The 12 came back. Ten of them only could talk about the giants and the obstacles and how hard it is to live in the generation that we're in, right? The school shootings, the broken families. They could only see the brokenness of, their, of, of the promised land. You guys with me? They could only see the obstacle. But they didn't hold on to God's promise. But yet there were two, correct? Joshua and Caleb. But they remembered what God said, and they saw the beauty. There's fig trees. There's, they start naming all the, all the promises that they witnessed. And they had the faith to believe that despite all the obstacles and the giants, that their God was greater than any obstacle, and that he, right, will fulfill every promise that he's ever given. The question today is, do we believe? Or are we wondering in the 40 years? Not going to be the generation that enters because we lack the faith. But there's another component that we must have. But I have to set the backstory because if you read Hebrews 1 through 4, you will have more of an understanding when we talk about the rest and the examples that we're bringing up that we just read. He is talking about the Israelites that did not enter into the promised land. Is everybody with me? But if that was yet the complete promised land, then there would be no, no need for that to be in the Bible because it would have been, it would have been over, yes? If that was simply all that was going to be, if that was the greatest rest ever, then we actually wouldn't be here. We wouldn't. Because the rest was not, it's not going to be tangible in this, in this earth that we could see that they entered. The rest is going to be in heaven with our heavenly father. But we're just setting the scene because sometimes we need, we need to understand, well, all the time we need to understand what we're reading in the context of what we're reading. Amen? So I'm going to read you a little bit more context. So if you were to flip back to Hebrews chapter 3. Verses 7 through 11, it says this. <clears throat> and this is also found in Acts chapter 1, 16. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, everybody say today. today. If you will hear his voice, and his is the Holy Spirit calling out to you all. And you know the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and God the Father are, are three in one. Amen. Today, if you were to hear his voice, it says, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. The Israelites, 40 years, were, they rebelled against God, you guys. It was their disbelief and disobedience that was projected from a hardened heart. In the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers, everybody say tested, tested, tested me. They tested the promises of God, the faithfulness of God. They tested God's hand, right? It says where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works for 40 years. I already named some of them. Therefore, I was angry with that generation. And said, they always go astray in their heart. And they have not known my ways. So I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Isn't that powerful? <coughs> they saw the miracles of God. They experienced the miracles of God. Not just being set free from slavery, but also the manna. And all of every, every other thing that the Lord did. Verse 12 says, beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. <sighs> Chapter 3, verse 16 says, for who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned? whose corpse fell in the wilderness. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in 
because of, everybody say unbelief. unbelief. They didn't believe the word of God, the promise of God. They could speak it, they knew it, but they didn't believe it. Everybody say belief. belief. It's essential. So the rest we're referring to is eternity. Yes, everybody, you guys with me? But then the question is, why do we want to enter this rest? Why is that important? Why was it important for that generation to not enter? We know that it was important for them not to enter because they didn't have the belief. And without the belief, you can't be obedient to something you don't believe in, amen? So the Lord had to allow Joshua to lead the next generation in because of their faith and their belief and also because he wanted us to get here. So we have an opportunity. Every generation after them has an opportunity. Every generation has an opportunity to enter into eternal rest, which is amazing, and it's a gift, and it's beautiful. But it does take some work. But I want to tell you why rest. Number one, everybody say it's a commandment. <laughs> it's a commandment. We can go back to the Sabbath, right? We go to the Ten Commandments, and we know the Sabbath is a commandment. But do we take a Sabbath? You don't have to answer me. <laughs> right? It's a commandment, right? I'm giving an example, right? This is an example that the Lord gave us to rest. The Sabbath is a part of the Ten Commandments of the Jewish law. We fulfill the law when we walk in love. So that means if we are loving ourselves and doing what God called us to do, we would take a Sabbath. How many of you take 24 hours where you do not work? Don't raise your hand. Don't look around. Just think about that. Well, we rest, number one, because it's a commandment. And, and God, it was crazy. He was like, he didn't create the Sabbath for us. He, cre he didn't create the, uh, us for the Sabbath. He created the Sabbath for us. The commandment is to help us. <laughs> It's a beautiful thing. It allows us to work the other days. It allows us to get, be in communion with the Lord. And if our Almighty Father can rest, why don't we? And y'all, I'm preaching to myself, okay? So this is not a, this is a, woo, I'm in the pot with you. Burning up right now, hot, seared, my soul, everything. You know, that's why I am still can't get rid of this little, this little cough, you know? I'm not sick. It's just wore down. It's stressed. It's not resting, my body. It's just an example for the, just an example of rest, right? But I want us to take this seriously though because if taking the sabbath is a rest then that means if we don't do it what are we what are we being we're being disobedient we're being disobedient and what prevented the israelites from entering the promised land disobedient so you know sometimes and i do this all the time right something could be heavy and hard but i laugh it off because like oh you know but what if god was like no baby girl it's not funny to me it's not funny for you to see my miracles every day and yet you not rest. It's not funny for me, for, for, for me to see you walk alongside young people and know that these things are going on, but you say nothing. It's not funny to me. It's life or death to me. And how about I not allow you to enter my rest, my eternal rest? Isn't that powerful, y'all? It puts in perspective for me every day and every moment, that not a thing is for granted. Not a thing is, not even my sleep, right? Not the convictions that the Lord's given me. I wanna read a little bit, Hebrew 3, 6, it says, but Christ as a son over his own house, he's referring to uh, the church, whose house we are if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. I'm gonna get back to that. Hebrews 3, 18 through 19 said, and to whom did he swear that there would, they would not enter his rest, but those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. So it is not just that we need to do it because we're afraid of God. We need to do it because if we love God, we follow his commandments. Amen? Amen. So if I receive the love of God, I will follow his commandments. So if he tells me to sit down and rest, what will I do? Out of love. Okay. The second point I put on here is judgment. So we go back to what I had to stand up and read today. In Hebrews chapter 4, it says, No creature is hidden from his sight. Amen. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him, of him to whom we must give an account. We will be judged, you all, off what we do. He's going to judge me for me and you for you. He's not going to judge me for all of you. Now, yes, we also understand that if you choose to be a leader, you will be held more accountable in certain areas, 100%. But all of us are going to seek the judgment of God, no matter if you believe in him or not. Amen. No matter if you walked with him every day of your life or not, we are all, if we believe what the word says, going to have to take an account. Every last one of us, we will be judged. I'm not supposed to be judging you like that, but God is your judge. Amen. Amen. So if, in essence, entering his rest 
is a part of what he's called us to do as believers. I'm going to get to what that looks like, you guys. Then to not do it, not only is it a commandment, but we'll be judged. As he judged the Israelites. He judged them, you all. Found them unfit to go into the promised land. And they were not allowed in. Are you seeing the connection? Point three. It's also a promise. Hebrews 4.1 says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. So it's a promise. When we give our life to Christ, when we are saved, we have a promise over our life after that. When we confess that Jesus is Lord and he died on the cross and you believe it in your heart, you guys, the promise is eternity. It's eternal rest. Do y'all see it? Like, you attain that promise once you give your life to Christ. So if we believe what we say, that he's our Lord and Savior, so that means he's coming back again, right? We sing about that, the second coming, that their judgment will happen, and he will separate the sheep and the goats, the sheep being the followers, the goats being the unbelievers, amen, okay? And then the sheep will enter his rest. And the rest would be nothing that we see here. It would just be praising and hallelujah and worshiping God all the days of our life, free from all the things. And if that don't bring you sweet joy, I don't know what does. That's a sweetness. That's a sweet, sweet, sweet treat, right? Taste and see that the Lord is good. And we're going to be able to do that all day, every day, in eternity. So if you believe in that promise, then you would do what he commands. And be found well in judgment. Amen. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So that's still Hebrews chapter 3. This speaker that the writer of Hebrews is referring to those Israelites in, in the wilderness. The word was preached to them you all. But they did not believe. It wasn't mixed with faith. Everybody say faith. So they could not hold on to the promise when things got hard. Right? At one point, didn't the Israelites want to go back into bondage? Do you guys remember that? They want to go back to the very thing that enslaved them. But we do it all the time. We do it all the time, right? I want to go back to when it was easier. It was easier for me to gossip and sit there. It's been harder for me to shut that down and move on, right? Right? It, it was easier when I was, you know, having fornication before I was married, right? Because I could just release, let go, and do whatever. It's hard to remain faithful married, right? Like, we, could, we, could, we all the time want to go back. All the time want to go back when it gets hard. So we are not much different than those Israelites, amen? Do you see their humanity, right? You get to something better, but the past, like, well, how many of us have romanticized the past? I do, I do it all the time. I do it all the time. I got super sick getting out of coaching, coach seven years, division one. And some days I'm like, man, it was so much easier. Like, girl, you couldn't even sleep, breathe. <laughs> when you got out, you couldn't move. Like, what are you talking about about killed you? How many times do we want to go back to the very things? <laughs> that the Lord has called us out of. He saved us. He prevented us from dying in that season, gave us new life, but we want to go back to death. The example is the Israelites, but we are too an example when we forget the promises of God. The promises of God of his eternal rest. Y'all still with me? But I do, you know, <laughs> the Lord works all things out for the good of those that believe, Amen. Amen? So, believe it or not, the Jews' disobedience opened the doors for the Gentiles to enter God's rest. So they actually didn't disobey. The Gentiles, which would be all of us that are not Jews, y'all with me, wouldn't have this opportunity. Because we see, fast forward, Jesus comes, does his thing, he opens up salvation for who? All people, everybody. We all became God's people if we simply accept him. So because of the Jews' disobedience, it opened it up for us. So I'm not saying amen to the Jews, right, being disobedient. They're an example for us, and God will show grace. He's the judge. So I'm not here to tell you if they're going to heaven or hell. No, that's not my job. All right? That's the Lord's. And sometimes you got to remember whose job is whose. Right? I stand before you as simply a messenger. I'm reading the same words you got. But the Lord just has called me in a certain way. So I'm sharing with you what he has given me. Read the word and find yourself accountable for his judgment, amen? amen? But because of that, we, we have the opportunity to enter into his eternal rest. 
And that is something to rejoice over, that we have the opportunity. Not because somebody else is disobedient. That's an example of what not to do. Amen. But now we have an example on how to do it better. We all good? Y'all with me? Very good. So there's a few things I want to talk about, and believe it or not, we're almost done. (laughs) For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, sometimes in in my past, I've read that. I'm just like, woo, you know, like, ah. That's amazing, God, that, the, that this word is living and can separate bone from marrow, right? It note that the word can sense out the intent of our heart. So it can separate that from what our actual actions are. That's what we judge. I think it's important for us to understand what the word of God is saying here, too, though. It, it, the Lord is reminding us that when he gives a commandment that is living and is powerful, that there will be a telltale, a telltale in everything that we do. That we're not to play around with the word of God as well. Are you guys with me? It's powerful and it's living. This is not dead. The promise and the commandments in this book are alive and well. Amen. So this ain't nothing to play with. So when God gives a command, there should be fear. The beginning of knowledge comes from fear. We read that in Proverbs. So if you lack a fear of God, and that's where sin finds its, its face when we become believers. Right? If I'm actively sinning, then do I truly fear the wrath of God? Do I truly fear what God has said? And I think in this generation where we've been so desensitized to so many things, we've had multiple school shootings this, in this area and beyond. Amen? Not even amen. The Lord Jesus, help us. Right? The other day, it didn't hit me until I remembered that my sister was walking into a school that a threat happened. It had to get so close to me for it to really hit me. Does that make sense? I was singing on the news. I was praying with people. But without a heart that broke for it for real because it happened so much. And my reminder when I read this was that for the word of God is living and powerful. Wake up, girl. When I give you a word or a command, when I tell you to love, when I tell you your heart to break for this world, blessed are the meek, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed. I can't be blessed if I actually can't feel, y'all. If I don't fear, if I don't know what the outcomes could be and what they're going to be, you guys, God's wrath is for real. It's for real. So when I'm praying, not just for the covering of our kids, but also for the people doing the threats, my heart should break for them. Why? Because I know that if they don't know the Lord, y'all, where they're going to be. I know the outcome of their life if they don't trust God. Amen? And I don't know if my heart breaks enough for that. I'm breaking because, ooh, keep everybody safe. Only God can do that. How am I covering these kids and their salvation? How am I covering the parents? How am I covering those that are putting out the threats that are so broken that they feel it's okay to go into a school and open fire? We can't be desensitized to the truth of the matter. We cannot keep running away and just like, oh, okay, it's another thing. Lord, don't let it happen to me. Don't let it happen at my school where my kids, grandkids, loved ones go to, right? Because that sometimes seems to be the top of my prayer list. Lord, protect my father, protect my mother, protect my brother. But am I praying for their hearts? Am I praying for their fear of God? Am I praying for their salvation so they can enter the rest? Because we know this world is fallen, amen? We know sin will be here, amen? But we're supposed to be the light upon the, upon the hill, but sometimes our light is dim because we forget to fear God. The power of his word is living, you guys. And what does that mean to you when you hear that? When he commands you, is there fear? Did I say shudder and not be able to move and come out your house? No. God called us to live, amen? But if you don't have a natural fear of God, if you believe that I can go do what I want to do and just ask for forgiveness later, you don't fear God. You don't fear God. Or respect him, 100%. For me to fear you, I've got to have some awe, reverence, respect for you. And that's a commandment. Do we have that for our Heavenly Father? Or have we been so desensitized to think that we are gods here? We'll be like the Jews, wondering 40 years and not enter his rest. Is that what we want? Is that how we're living? Here's the grace. The throne of grace is this. We do have a high priest that can sympathize with us. We do. He was tempted by everything that we are tempted by, yet without sin. He walked this earth for 33 years, and I'm sure... Being the son of the father, he could have been like, I'm God. (laughs) You know, he could have did that. 
in so many ways that we do it now. I had a boss before. She was like, let me put you in your place. She used to say that. And I'm like, but what place do you have? If we're all children of God, you know? Who am I to put you in your place? No, I need to get in mine, and God will do the rest. But Jesus walked this earth, y'all, as God, but didn't consider himself as such. He walked as a human, knowing his power, though, that comes from the Holy Spirit. And Jesus was tempted by everything. If you think that your quiet, secret sin is just yours, believe me, Jesus sees it, was tempted by it, and didn't sin. It may not be as specific as what you're going through in this generation, but it boils down to the same thing. Lust, fornication, right? We have all kinds of emotions. Have emotions, do, have anger, do not sin. Are you guys with me? Jesus felt all those things, but he did not sin. So we have a heavenly father that was also human, that has gone through the things that you are going through. So no, no we're not God, but we're also not just nothing. Is everybody with me? Because sometimes we're, this, we're on this spectrum. But Lord, my life doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what I do. It does matter because you're made in God's image and you're made in purpose and you're a part of his church. You're part of his body. What you believe, you are a part of that. So what you do, what you say matters. And you have a high priest that can sympathize with you and walk you through whatever season you're in. Amen. And so because he can do that, it calls us to be bold. It calls us to be bold. He calls us to be what, you guys? Bold. In chapter 4, 16, it says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, point one, if you're at the last point, and find grace, point two, and help, or to help in the time of need, point three. And I love that because it reminds us we're supposed to be obedient. To be obedient means that I love God. If I love God, I will follow his commands. Amen? Amen. Right? And I also fear God. I know that he is the one that's going to bring forth judgment and wrath. So I love him and I fear him. Love and fear do coincide. It's the type of fear that you must have to honor God. Is everybody with me? Because oppressing people in your homes, right? If you raise your hand and everyone shudders, that is not the fear God's called us to. God has a respect because he is God. There's a fear that he must have that no one else should have. Amen? Are you guys with me? I want to be clear because we can hear love and fear and people be like, exactly, I rule my home with an iron fist. Where is that biblical? Okay? That is not. But to fear God is. To fear God is. That is biblical. So I want to keep the main thing the main thing because, again, we're not God. But people shouldn't be, I shouldn't have to raise my hand and people shudder. I'm giving an example, but on something that's really real, amen. All right? But we are to fear God. So that's, that's, that's highly important. Um, and so we fear God out of love. We fear God out of his judgment. But then, you guys, we respect, which is also a form of fear, because his promises will come to fruition. Amen? So for all that to happen, I just wanted to read this to you. I want, I want us to be bold like Joshua. I want us to be bold like Joshua. Joshua went into the promised land, and he didn't just focus on the obstacles. He focused on the beauty. He focused on the promises of God, which are excellent and amazing. Doesn't mean they won't come without struggle, amen? Right? There were giants in the promised land. <laughs> there were huge people. He didn't focus on that, though. He focused on the good things, and that allowed him to come back with boldness and pronounce the promises of God to unbelieving people, amen? And so I wrote this down. And you can take it how you want. The reason why we can come to the throne of grace with boldness is because we know where our rest is truly found. And it's in eternity. It's not here on this earth. It's in eternity. So the illness, the struggle, right? Man, you guys, all of that will dissipate when we get to heaven. But we got to make it there. Sound good? So rest restores for more. Rest restores for more. And the more... Everybody say eternal rewards. Eternal rewards. That's why we should be living our life. That's how, in fear of God, under his judgment, out of love for his commandments, believing in his promises, we'll be able to enter his rest. So I feel like I made it light and fluffy at the end, but this is pretty powerful, right? God says rest, and that's a commandment. Then what should we do? Rest our bodies. To honor that and be obedient, even in the small details, will allow us to enter in eternal rest. So those are my examples for you today because that came out of Hebrews 4. But then I want to give this charge to us as a church. Are we ready? 
Are we ready? Amen. The rest on earth, that one day a week, I'm going to charge us to it for October. 24 hours once a week for the rest of October. Can we try and do it, church? Can we try and do it? Can we try and be obedient to what God's called us to? Because the other six days, you should be working. You should be getting after it. But imagine if we begin to rest, when we come to, to our full fellowship, how many of us will actually be tired? How many of us will be burnt out? <laughs> how many more hands can we get raised to go do the work? If we actually take the rest from all the things and not be bogged <coughs> down every second of every day with all the things that we're already desensitized to. October, one 24 hours a week, every week. Let's rest. You guys want to do it? It sounds it sound pretty good, right? You know what I'm saying? All right? And, and when we, it's not easy. Right, if it was easy, we'd be doing it. You know what I'm saying? We would be, we would be here. We would be here. And believe, if you think you live a lazy life, you still need, you still need rest. Some people are like, I'd be chilling. Okay, but if you're, if you're watching TV 20 hours of the day, right? The rest is not just to go to sleep. The rest is to be in communion with God. So those 24 hours, you should be seeking the word of God. Amen? Amen. Praying. Sometimes people pray and fast. You can do that too. But the object is not to work, but be building relationships with God and with those around you. Am I clear? Does that make sense? I want to be very specific about the Sabbath. It's not just Netflix and chill. If that's what you do six days out of the week, on that seventh day, that's not what we're doing. Cut off the TV, get outside, get with your family, build relationships, get with God, though, first. That's the whole point of the Sabbath. Get with God. Yeah, everybody say, get with God. Get with God. We got to get with God more. Imagine 24 hours where you're not stressed with everything and you're able to hear God's voice. Have mercy. All the distractions are laid down, and when God speaks, you can hear. Then you can do. Now, when you walk back to work on Monday, you're ready. You're ready. You know the spirits is coming. You know the hatred might be coming. The, the what? You're ready. I'm going to challenge this for the month of October. 20, one 24 hours per week. You rest. No distractions. No video games. No TV. No work. Work, 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 work. Sit down somewhere. Okay? All right? If you're usually cooking, get somebody else to cook. Get some takeout. Make the food on Saturday. I don't know. Rest. Are you guys with me? Huh? What did you say? You live by yourself? Look, listen, listen. We in community, so you know what? Come on over, have some dinner. You know what I'm saying? We make it on Saturday night. But this is what it's about. This is what it's about. We got you. We, I'm serious. I'm serious. We'll, we'll get you some food. We'll get you some food. We're going to get together, you guys. And um, I want to challenge us to take the word of God seriously when we do have that rest. What God's commanding you to do something, what should we do? <laughs> if God's commanding us to do anything else besides rest, what should we do? We should do it. We should do it out of love. And if you don't know what that is right now, get in that 24 hours. Get with God. Come talk with me. Come talk with Pastor Jackson. Come talk with some people that are in love with God. And then they'll help you see what it means to love him, receive his love. And because out of love, you will follow his commandments. All right, you guys? So with that being said, the doors of the church are open. If you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then this eternal rest I'm referring to is not yours. But it can be. So if you're online and you're like, I want eternal rest, hallelujah, put it in the, in the chat. If not, come find us. We are here. The doors of this church is open, not just on Sundays, 9 to noon. We are the church everywhere we go, amen. So when people see us, they should be able to ask questions about God and get prayer and love. Doors of the church are open. Uh-oh. With transition, not of earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging. 
trust in him who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring, if by earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to him cling. Everybody ought to God's unchanging hand, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand, build your life on things eternal, hold to God's unchanging When your journey is completed, if to God you have been true, fair and bright the home in glory, your Everybody ought to hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. God's unchanging hand, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand, build your hopes on things eternal, hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. Amen. If that ain't the best message to leave here with. Every day this week, hold on to his unchanging hand. Women, don't forget we're downstairs after this. We got some community service. Let's put our hands and feet. <laughs> For the women, there, are, there is food. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. But there is some snacks downstairs, you guys. And most importantly, let's go, let's go with God. Amen. Go with God this week. 24 hours of rest. Know from whom your salvation comes from. And fear God. Holy Spirit, we thank you and we lift you up and we, we give you ourselves where we lay our burdens down at your feet, God. And when we have light hands, we can hold on to our Heavenly Father. So God, we release, we surrender, and we grab a hold of you in a way we have never done before, God. May we run to your throne of grace, boldness, God, proud to be your children, proud to have a Father that loves us despite it all, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the community service we're gonna have downstairs, God. May we go with willing hearts to give and to do the work, Jesus. Bless Pastor and Ms. Jackson, and God, may this church thrive because it is yours and not ours. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen.